You know, we've all heard of sleepwalking. There's also sleep eating. Now we're getting a look at a very different sleep disorder. Dr. Joe, it's called sleep drunkenness. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard of it, but I guess you've learned it's actually kind of common. You know, it is. A new study is saying that about one in seven people have something called sleep drunkenness, or it's also called confusional arousal. So it's when you wake up and you are just, you don't know where you are, or perhaps you mistake your telephone for your alarm, or maybe you even get up and walk around and don't know where you are. And so what happens in these confusional arousals is that the person can then do something that they could regret later. So I think that's one of the concerns by the authors. They say that maybe historically there was um, even some story about a knight who was awakened by someone and, um, and, and killed him because he thought that he was at war with someone else. So again, I guess they can be very violent, but for the most part, it's probably some of us just mistaking that telephone for the alarm clock. Yeah, anybody at more of a risk than others? You know, they say that there are, and people with sleep disorders, existing sleep disorders, like um, their clock being off, that circadian rhythm being off, or people with sleep apnea perhaps, or maybe even insomnia can be an increased risk. Also people with mental disorders like depression or maybe bipolar disorder. And then there was also a group of them that were on medications and it was primarily those antidepressants. So again, lots of things perhaps may trigger them, but of course the results may be the same. And once again, the concern is that they don't want people operating heavy machinery or doing anything that could be dangerous because they can last around five to 15 minutes. So once again, I guess it's just the, uh, the information and knowing that it could happen. Sure, no falling asleep on the forklift. That would be a bad <laughs> That thing. would not be good. Uh, what about this other story breaking today? This one about teens and depression. Uh, hopefully some good news for parents. You know, this is good news. They're saying that we may be able to treat depression in teens in the primary care setting. And so what they did was they took these teens and up to 10 to 20 percent of our teens have depressive episodes. And so what they did was they put them into a treatment program within that primary care setting. They saw somebody with a master's degree. Um, they, they were evaluated once every Every one to two weeks and then less less frequently when they got better a psychiatrist was involved a psychologist was involved and certainly the pediatrician was involved and when they looked at the very end they found that the remission rates in these kids were about 50 percent compared to 20 percent in usual care and usual care meant that they were sent out to some other entity and they also found that the quality and the standards that were met were about 87 86 percent of the standards were met in this setting versus only about 25 percent in the settings that were usual care so again, this might give us another opportunity to treat these kids. We know it contributes to obesity, problems with grades, all sorts of other things can happen when our kids are depressed. So maybe this might be a new way. And often so difficult just even to diagnose. So as long as That's we're getting true. there and talking about it. That's true. All right, good stuff. Joe, right, thanks. Thanks, as always. Mark. Chip.